Warren Hall, what are you smiling about over there? Why, Bob, you know, this is our last program until September, and I just got a mental picture of thousands of our friends in their homes late this evening, poring over road maps, planning what routes they'll take to that wonderful two weeks vacation to the seashore or the mountains, riding, swimming, hunting, fishing. And you know, I'm reminded of a little scene that happened just a few weeks ago in the mountains. Two schoolmates of mine had been fishing, and they came back to the campfire for their supper. Their wives were waiting. Listen. Hi, Jim. How many did you catch? Got a full basket? Yep, they're biting swell today, Pat. Marvelous trout. But boy, I'm tired. Say, have you got a cup of coffee ready? You bet I have, dear. Maxwell House. Just opened our third can today. And Jim, that vacuum pack is wonderful. This last can of coffee's just as fresh as the first one we opened. You'll have a cup in a minute. And friends, it's a wonderful feeling to know that even though you may be in the wilds of nowhere, you can still have your fresh, full-flavored cup of Maxwell House coffee any time you want it. Now, that's one of the comforts of home that you can take right along with you. For Maxwell House, packed in that famous blue super vacuum can, will always be roaster fresh, always have that full-bodied flavor that you love at home. You can stock up with two cans or two dozen in one-pound or two-pound sizes. No matter how long you're gone, the last can of coffee you open will be just as fresh and full-flavored as the first. So take along your Maxwell House for added pleasure. Make your vacation perfect. And if any of you folks, like many of us, are staying at home this summer, then you'll be thankful for the cool, refreshing pickup of a frosty glass of iced Maxwell House. So, friends, ask your grocer for Maxwell House tomorrow, because iced or hot, we know you'll find this new, richer, smoother Maxwell House is just about the tops in coffee pleasure. <laughs> We're going to try a little experiment now, ladies and gentlemen. We want to present one of the production numbers from The Wizard of Oz, a song sequence greeting little Dorothy when she first arrived in the land of Oz. She's been whirled away from her home in Kansas by a tornado, house and all. And by a strange coincidence, her house lands right on top of a wicked witch in the land of Oz. So the people who live there are very glad to see her. Right after the crash, the natives, who are called munchkins, if you remember, peep shyly out from behind the shrubbery and begin to sing a welcome to Dorothy. Listen. Come out, come out, wherever you are, and meet the young lady who fell from the star. She brings you good news. Oh, heaven to her, when she fell on the canvas of miracle of It really was no miracle. What happened was just this. The house began to pitch, the kitchen took a slitch, and suddenly the hinges started to unhitch. Just then... The witch, to satisfy an itch, went flying on her broomstick, thumbing for a hit. And oh, what happened then was rich. A house began to pitch, a kitchen took a stick, and found the wicked witch in the middle of a chin. Which was not a healthy situation for a wicked witch who began to quit and was reduced. songs from the wizard production. Bert Lars' characterization of the cowardly lion. I, the king of the father, not queen, and not duke, not prince, my regal robe of the father. 
satin, a knot, a coffin, a knot, chintz. <laughs> I'll command this thing, be it fish or fowl, with a wolf, and a wolf, and a royal growl. <laughs> As I click my heel, all the trees would kneel, and the mountains bow, and the bulls cow cow. And the sparrow would take we <laughs> for the king. <laughs> Each rabbit would show respect to me. The chipmunks genuflect me. Though my tail would lash, I would show compass for every under. <laughs> And his wife would be queen of the May. My lovely manok, Namal, Nice Your Majesty, if you were king, you wouldn't be afraid of anything. Not nobody, not no how. Not even a rhinoceros? Imposterous. How about a hippopotamus? Why, I trash him from top to bottom of Supposing you met an elephant. I'd wrap him up in cellophane. What if it were a brontosaurus? I'd show him who was king of the forest. How? How? Courage. What makes a king out of a slave? Courage. What makes the flag on the mast to wave? Courage. What makes the elephant charge his tusk in the misty mist of the dusky dusk? What makes the muskrat guard his musk? Courage. What makes the Sphinx the seventh wonder? Courage. What makes dawn come up like thunder? Courage. <laughs> what makes the hot and top so hot? What put the ape in apricot? What have they got that I ain't got? Courage. Hey, you can say that again. Huh? Oh, the courage is the thing of kings. Which courage I'd be king. Our kings in the whole year round, I beheld and crowned my earthly That was The King of the Forest by Bert Lauer.